Neil here. On today's show, we're going to Watson's hunting camp in search of the elusive morning dove. Raven, fetch him up. Next, what happens when DNR teams up with goats? Stay tuned to find out what that's all about. Next, Laura Shera goes wild in the kitchen, this time cooking up a wild bird that can be a challenge for the most seasoned chef. Crispy quail salad. Yes, we always say introduce a kid to the great outdoors, but how about introducing a kid to the farm? We visit the City Kid Farm to learn more. Those stories and more next. Minnesota Bound. Brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Hi, everybody. Raven and I welcome you to the show. Well, you can see Raven's not here. She has the day off. That's because I'm heading to a sporting clays field with my Benelli to sharpen my shooting eye. That brings up our first story as we head to Watson's Hunting Camp to participate in one of Minnesota's newest game bird seasons. Pheasant hunting has been an autumn pastime in Minnesota since the first season was set back in 1924. And duck hunting in Minnesota is older still. So while our eyes are looking up, can you name the most popular game bird flying high in America today? It's this one, the morning dove. Surprised? Shouldn't be. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service estimates the dove population at about 274 million. There we go. Nice shot. Let's it up. Despite the bird's abundance, dove hunting is relatively new to Minnesotans. In 2004, the legislature approved dove seasons following a 60-year closure, finally joining 38 other states offering dove hunts. Ah, one more thing. Nobody said dove hunting was easy. The thing about dove hunting is you need eyes here and way back here. So your head goes like this all the time. Raven's head was doing the same. She is wired. But you know what? I wouldn't have a dog any other way. Raven is a pheasant dog. She's never had to sit still. Heel here, heel here. Good job, Raven. Yes. Good girl. Let's get up. That a girl. Good girl. There you go, Laura. Right. Good shot. As a Minnesota hunting guy, Chuck Ellingson has discovered the thrill of doves in the air. I started out just taking a few guys here and there out, and I didn't know what I was doing. You know, now I've, I've kind of got it down where we've got some really nice uh, wheat fields. So now I kind of got it down. We've got the, the trees out here. We've got the decoys. We've got the mojos, all this kind of stuff, and it seems to work pretty good. While the doves flew and the shotguns fired, it was easy to tell who was a crack shot. I've been hunting them since the very beginning. It's the last game bird we have in Minnesota where you can actually go through two boxes of shells in 20 minutes. I think it's the bird of the future. I mean, for migratory birds, it's fantastic. It's a short season. It's, you know, when they decide to go south, they go south. Yes, the dove season is short in Minnesota, but it's also very tasty. They're incredible table fare. I mean, I flash cook them in a wok a lot. I cook them in cast iron pans. You know, they're not gonna be on here long. Six minutes, something like that. Well, we'll check them here. Look done and look tasty. Oh, darn! Yes, that's a Minnesota Dove Day, when a few birds fall and most keep flying.
Now, don't be scared of these Billy Goat Gruffs. They are on the clock and working for Minnesotans. Stay with us. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Connecticut. Ellsworth Creamery. And by Border View Lodge. Coming up, we've all heard about Billy Goat Gruff, right? Well, we call our story Billy Goat Bluff, and you'll never guess why. Lindsay Hayes has the story. Rushford, Minnesota. A hidden gem nestled between the bluffs and the Root River. Good people, great place to live, good schools. Some pass through this small town on the state bike trail. Others pit stop for coffee or ice cream while most visit for the panoramic views. So this view is one of Rushford's finest, but there are also some new kids in town that are creating quite the buzz. Goats, absolutely. We're lucky to have them. Call it Billy Goat's Bluff, if you will. There are big goats, kids, curious goats, and even the king of the hill. Everybody loves them. <laughs> it's just great. People enjoy it. People in the businesses downtown, they got chairs set up front. They sit, they have their coffee, look up on the bluff, enjoy themselves. It's been a lot of fun. Well, my job may be in danger because I sit here all day watching the goats. You know? <laughs> the people gaze while the goats graze the bluff side. These guys over here, they're playing King of the Rock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of them's got to be named Billy, I hope. I'm uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and this is not some tourism stint. It is a DNR habitat restoration project. This area is a high priority for the Department of Natural Resources because of the um, number of rare species. Uh, that includes plant species as well as animal species. Um, for species of conservation concern, we have the highest number of anywhere in the state. One of the things we need to do is habitat restoration, and part of that involves dealing with invasive species and trying to get the natives an edge to be able to compete against those invasives. Muggleson Bluff is carpeted with honeysuckle and buckthorn. Both invasives are suffocating the natural prairie grass. They're depriving the, the um, area of sunlight and they're taking up nutrients. Buckthorn is a huge problem in all of southeast Minnesota and it's a big threat to our natural resources here. So if we can find effective ways at dealing with it, that, that's fantastic. And goats is one of those tools in the toolbox. Back in the 50s, the bluff was mainly prairie grass. Then in the 90s, cedar trees and brush started to overpower. Crews came in and then cleared those trees. And now, the DNR is praising one of their most unique efforts yet. Go goats! Go goats! The reason we're using goats is that 80% of their diet um, is brush. Um, and then they like flowers and then they like grass. So for us trying to do restoration work on prairies, they're a perfect species. More than 100 little landscapers chomp their way across this steep side hill. And in just a couple of months, they will cover nearly 100 acres. They also strip the foliage and that repeated stripping depletes the energy of the plant. <laughs> they are also friendly foragers. But yeah, they, they're real characters. They like to climb on things, they like to play. A solar-powered electric fence keeps them in line, making this project entirely eco-friendly and cost-effective. They are probably the cutest little land stewards you will ever meet. They're adorable. Who doesn't like goats? <laughs> and these kids, are just one small piece of a 10-year statewide effort to restore our blufflands. This area is really unique because of the bluffland habitat. It has the highest diversity of um, rare species, and it also has a high diversity of different habitat types. So it makes this part of the state very unique compared to other parts of the state. So you can see rivers and wetlands and bluffs and woodlands and all different kinds of habitats down here.
Coming up, how about a little tasty recipe for a little tasty bird? Laura Shera is cooking wild quail. Delicious. Closed captioning is brought to you by By the Yard. Okay, it's time to go wild in the kitchen. Daughter Laura this time has something on the menu that she says is Bob White quail salad. Welcome back. Well, fall is soon approaching, and today we're getting wild in the kitchen with Chef Paul from Fire Lake Grill House and Cocktail Bar. And because the chill is in the air, we are making a crispy quail salad today. Yes, we're going to wild rice crust it, fry it, make a beautiful fall salad with Minnesota apples, Stickney Hill goat cheese, and a sherry walnut dressing. That sounds delicious. Now, what are our first steps? Well, with wild game birds, what would we begin with? We always say hunters, right? You should brine your birds. Perfect. We're going to start off with three tablespoons of salt three cups of water, ounce and a half of sugar. After we have the sugar and the salt dissolved with those herbs, we're just gonna set our quail down in our brine for about 20 minutes. One of the great things in fall is we have local Minnesota grapes. And so one of the things I like to do is I like to roast them to intensify their flavor. If you don't poke the hole, they build up too much heat inside and they pop. 350 degrees for about 30 minutes. So now we're gonna make the dressing for the salad. Well, this is gonna be a sherry walnut dressing. So we have walnut oil and we have sherry vinegar. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by putting the Dijon mustard down in the bowl. So right now we're gonna take the sherry vinegar and whisk it in here. If you'll take the walnut dressing and just- Slowly? Yes, yeah, slowly drizzle in there. Now if you'll take that garlic sure. and put those shallots in there. Now all we wanna do is leave this mixture, set it in your refrigerator, till tomorrow evening, and then you're just gonna strain it through a, a strainer and you're gonna have your vinaigrette ready to go. So one of my favorite things about this salad and one of my favorite things to do with wild rice is actually grind it up, make it into a wild rice flour. Your coffee mill at home is a perfect instrument for doing this. So you're gonna take about a quarter cup and grind it up. Just a couple pinches of blackening spice? Yes, please. So now what we wanna do is we wanna take our quail and we're just gonna dredge it in our wild rice flour. Press it in there so you get a nice crust on there. So now we have our quail ready. We wanna set our, our fryer at 350, 360 degrees. If you don't have a fryer at home, just do it in a shallow pan. Just until that crust sets. So it's about four minutes. That's okay. it? Yeah. So there's our Look at that gorgeous, wow. nutty color of those quails. Beautiful. So now let's put together our salad. So we have these beautiful Minnesota apples, baby kale. Put them in there. Stickney Hill goat cheese. A few of our roast grapes. I'm really excited to try these. And then we have our sherry walnut vinaigrette. We're just gonna lightly drizzle. Then we're gonna take one of our quail and we just take these pieces and stand them up like that. All right, so here it is, our crispy quail salad. Of course, it looks amazing. I can't wait to give it a try here. But if you're looking for something new to do with your quail, check out this new fall salad because it is wildly delicious. Coming up, it's a program that teaches city kids about the story of where their food comes from. And it all starts with down on the farm. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Jesse Treble's Safe Basements of Minnesota, Vino in the Valley, Open Air Solutions, Maui Gym Sunglasses, and by Evan Root, the official outboard motor of Minnesota Bound. As you know, we always end our show with introduce a kid to the great outdoors. We could also say introduce a kid to the farm. Why? Because kids today often don't know where their food comes from. So some of them are learning fast. Our videographer, Josh Bryant, has the story.
We're at the City Kid Farm in South Minneapolis. We're right on the Midtown Greenway, which is a bike trail. We're gonna start with the cucumbers, beets, and collard greens. There's one up top there. What we do with the food that we grow here is we hire neighborhood kids and we teach them how to farm. We have uh, eight students that work with us uh, during the summer. These kids are learning a skill, but they're also helping to feed close to 2,000 people this year. It's important that urban kids have a chance at learning about agriculture. I want to learn how everything grows. The kids that we have with us on the farm are fantastic. They're inquisitive, they're creative. I've learned a lot of how everything looks and everything grows. If you can create the whole, the context of where that food came from. So it's in your neighborhood, it's growing from the soil. If the kid had an experience of planting the seed, you know, to watering it, to weeding it, harvesting it, there's no way that kid isn't gonna at least try it. Like the zucchinis, I never tasted them before. And they taste pretty good when you grill them. I didn't know how, I didn't even know a, like lettuce could grow in different ways. We have the kids pick the food, process the food, put it in a refrigerated truck. We have our mobile farmer's market truck that sells here a few times a week, um, but it actually is going to hospitals, to elementary schools. It's going to the McDonald's parking lot. Farmer's market. We developed a really simple pricing model uh, that we sell um, bags of produce for $5. Thank you. Thank you. Now on top of that, which is just as important, is the whole aspect of learning what to do with the food. So we have a nutrition educator. Where else do we get our protein from? Do you guys know? If we're going to be growing food in an urban farm to feed hungry people, then it made sense to us to also address the issue that is threatening the source of our food, which is this massive bee die-off. We decided to uh, team up with the University of Minnesota and um, have women be trained, local neighborhood women, as beekeepers. We thought it would be cool to develop a program where um, it was more hands-on and there, we could actually train some new beekeepers. When we first started working with these ladies, uh, they were really nervous about getting stung, but now you'll see that they're grabbing the frames and pointing things out and brushing bees off themselves and have become a lot more comfortable working with honeybees. I thought I was going to be so scared at the first, but after, no, I'm not anymore. Larvas? Yep, def definitely lots of larvae. These women that we're working with, it happens to be all women, they are totally engaged asking all of these questions. People passing around frames and showing each other what they're seeing and um, everyone's kind of teaching and explaining and asking lots of questions. Uh, bees flying everywhere and it's been a lot of fun. It's really hard work. I really like it. For us to find land here along the railroad tracks around the Midtown Greenway is a perfect setting for urban kids to begin to learn something that I think is already innate in them. A lot goes on down on the farm as these kids discover. Well that about does it for us. Remember, introduce a kid to the great outdoors and take them to a farm. I'm Ron Shera and Raven will be back next week. She is the star of the show. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433. For more information on these stories and more, catch us on the web at mnbound.com. Share your stories on the Minnesota Bound Facebook page under the Share Your Story tab.